Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Meissner Media tutorial, we're going to be taking another viewer request, this time from my buddy Kasten Day, who's always very active on the Meissner Media YouTube channel. I always appreciate you hanging out, bud. And this is going to be all about curves inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci Resolve has a bunch of different curves all under one little tab, and they're really great for anything from making really stylized looks to just sort of tweaking little bits of stuff inside of your grade. It's a really powerful tab that's really great for all sorts of your grading needs. So without further ado, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and get started. The first thing you do is make sure you're in the Curves tab. Just make sure you have this little button in the middle of your screen clicked, and that'll make sure you're in the Curves. And now we've got all of our different curves able to be selected over here. Go and just select our custom RGB curves. And here you see we have four little graphs, all looking identical right now. We've got Illuminance, Red, Green, and Blue. And these are for different channels. You've got your Luminance channel, your Red channel, your Green channel, your Blue channel. And default, they're all ganged together like this. So you can sort of change contrast if you want and do that sort of thing. Just click to add points and right click to delete points. But if you want to get a little more control, you can go over to your little menu tab in the top right hand corner of the tab and uncheck gang custom curves. Now you can adjust each channel individually. And this is where you get a lot of really powerful stuff happening here. So let's go into gigantor mode by clicking the bottom at the button of the curves tab and see exactly what we can do. So we've all seen these curves before probably, but what do they really mean? These are basically just creating a graph. At the bottom x-axis, you have your input value for that channel. So you see we've got the dark stuff at the bottom and the light stuff at the top. And the y-axis is our output for that. So you can see when we drag a point down really far, our image gets darker. And that's because these brighter parts of the image are being mapped to this darker output. And this goes along with all the channels that you want. So you can see now we're getting more reds in the highlights and less reds in the shadows as we adjust this in our red channel. And say that you have uh, a grade just like we did there. And you say you like that, you just want less of it. You can go down to your intensity slider at the bottom and it'll basically reduce the opacity of what you did. And you can even invert what you did, which is really cool. Speaking of invert, on the sides of your graph, you have a YSFX slider which allows you to invert the channel, which is super cool. So if you wanted to, you could invert the red channel and then dial that opacity back some. And then you have a really interesting stylized look. And you can do that with you know whatever channels you want. These do all sorts of great stuff. And that's kind of the meat and potatoes of what this first curves tab is for. You go and reset these if you want to. One quick tip, sort of common thing that is done a lot with these curves is to just sort of narrow the dynamic range of your blue channel and that'll give you this sort of vintagey look with the bluey shadows and yellowy highlights and to get out of this one you can either just click off or hit escape the next tab that we're going to look at is the soft clip curve and for these we're going to up our contrast some just so we can really see what's going on there that's looking good we'll bump this guy up just for the future and what these do is it lets you define a clipping point for your image so normally You'll clip it either zero or you know 123 depending if you're clipping your blacks or your whites or if you're you know in a 8-bit color space it'll be zero or 255 and i don't know 14 or 16 bit off the top of my head but it's two to the power of 14 minus one for your high point there two to the power of 16 minus one for the high point there and that continues out through all other bit depths you know bonus tip right there so here you see we've got a pretty contrasty image our whites are basically white we can boop they're clipping off there they're not white but you know two out of three channels are clipping and our black same thing so if we want to make this a sort of more washed out look where our blacks clip higher than black we just take our low soft and bring it up and now our blacks you can see if we pull our scopes over again are clipping at a much higher value and say we like that amount of clipping, but we want to change where it's clipping at. You can drag the sliders to the side here, and that'll give you more or less. And you can do the same thing with your highs. So we'll just bring our high soft up. And you can see right over there in our scopes, the highs being clipped at different points. And of course, you can also adjust where they're being clipped at right over here. So these are sort of the least curvy curves in here, but they work well, and they're great for, you know, making all sorts of cool stuff. So we will just reset these guys also and go over to our next one. This is our hue versus hue curve. And as the name would imply, you select a range of hues that you want to change, let's say yellows, and then you can shift the hue of just that color. So you can see we're making our yellow highlights all sorts of different colors here. What I normally use this for is just giving little sort of kisses of change to skin tones if they're you know a little bit too orangey or a little bit too yellowy and just kind of 
just nudging them a bit. All these sort of hue versus X controls are really great for minor little adjustments, uh, especially with sort of skin tones or other featured objects. You just want to sort of tweak the color a little bit on. Along with being able to sort of click in here and drag yourself, if you want a little bit more accurate control, you can go down to the bottom and change your input hue just like this. And of course, the hue rotation, which is basically y-axis control. If you want even more control in here, you can go over and open up your Bezier handles, and now you can define a curve much better. If you want to do something crazy like this, you have the ability to do that. And of course, like I clicked down before, you can select sort of default hue ranges like that if you want to, or you can also use your color picker and select exactly which hue you want to change. And right there, you're seeing really localized. If you want to spread that out, you can click that guy, and there we're going. So it's a great tool. One of the, the couple that's really great for really minor adjustments, fine tuning stuff. Another good one for that is the hue versus saturation control. This is one I'm going to hop over to this clip and just sort of do some garbage. It doesn't look great, but you know, it's fine. And this is really good for um, either sort of adding some focus to your image just a little bit, or you can really kind of go Sin City with it. So let's say we want to sort of go Sin City effect with these yellows. We can select our yellows here. And just like in the other one, we have our hue versus our change in whatever. So we're selecting our yellows. We're going to desaturate everything that isn't yellow. So we'll pull that guy down and we'll pull this one down. And now you can see only our yellows are left with saturation. So there's your Sin City effect if you want it. Super easy, just like that. Of course, we have our fine tuning controls down here at the bottom and our other selections. And of course, you can also just select the color that you want to affect and boop, there goes that sign. Now we'll reset these guys and go back to our hue versus luminance. And this, you'll be able to select the hue range again, just like in the last two controls, and then affect the luminance value of it. So if we wanted to make this yellow sort of gas station thing brighter, we just select our yellows here and bump this up. And you can see when we get really high here, the image gets really artifacty. This is a control that you want to use very lightly. I'll use it a lot for, uh, once again, skin tones, just kind of giving it that little extra lift when I don't want to use like a secondary power window or something, or within a power window, just kind of bumping it up to give you a little bit more of that focus to your image. Or if someone's holding like, you know, a red handkerchief or something, and you want to give it a little bit more pop, you can just do that. So super great control. Over to the next one, we have luminance versus saturation. We'll hop back to our other image for this. And this, on our x-axis, we have our luminance values, just like we've seen with hue in the previous couple controls. And then our y-axis is the saturation values. So you can see we can really saturate our midtones or bring them down. What I'll often use this for is desaturating my highlights and shadows to let my shadows and highlights be sort of cleaner looking and not as gross hipster vintage and then being able to add your color back in where you want it. So you can see there's a big difference there between how it was and then how it is there. So whether it's better or not is up to you, but it's a really great thing to do. It really lets you clean up the look of your image and make it less gross looking. And then over on our final last curve, we have our saturation versus saturation. So our X axis here is saturation and our Y axis is saturation, which sounds kind of weird and uh, redundant, but it's really great. This lets you, if you have less saturated stuff like we have here in our shadows, lets you pull that down. And if you have more saturated stuff, to bring that up. Or if you want to just saturate your midtones and then sort of tame down your really saturated stuff, you can do that also. You get all sorts of interesting effects here. And it's really great. And of course, all of these have these more fine-tuned controls here at the bottom, along with the ability to make your own custom Bezier curve. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, thanks for my buddy Kasten Day for suggesting this. I always appreciate you hanging out, man. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, be sure to give it a dislike. If your feelings are more complicated than that, be sure to leave me a comment down in the description below. If you don't have anything to say, then leave a joke because that's always fun and the comments brighten my day. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Mies New Media YouTube channel. If you want to see even more content, be sure to check out our social media stuff, links for which are in the description below. While you're on your various social platforms, be sure to share this video with all your friends so they can understand how to use the curves inside of DaVinci Resolve. These same concepts apply throughout all programs that have curves, of course. You just need to figure out which type they are and apply them there. They're very simple and very powerful. Once again, I've been Theo with Mies New Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.